Hello everyone, this is Susan Gerbeck from the GSOW Gorilla Skepticism on Wikipedia Project. And today I have a real treat for you. We're speaking to Claire, all the way from the Czech Republic. Hello everyone. So great to hear you again. I saw I just saw you a couple days ago. Yes, we saw each other in Las Vegas at the CSI conference. That was a lot of fun, wasn't it? It was. It was amazing. And that's what I want to talk to you about today is the, the whole, the conference as well as, you know, you had just come back from QED in Manchester as well as the upcoming conference that you're responsible for. Yeah. Can you tell everybody about who you are and what you represent? Of course. I'm Claire Kleinberg. I am from the Czech Republic and I am the foreign liaison for the Czech Skeptics Club as well as the organizer of the Czech Paranormal Challenge which is trying to, in its way, continue the work of the Amazing Landy uh, within a European context. Great. And so you were just at QED, which I have spoken at before. 2014, I spoke there, and I found that conference just amazing. It's unique. Um, they do things a little bit differently than a t typical TAM or a PSYCON has. And, you know, what were your impressions of this PSYCON? I think the main difference between QED and PSYCON is that PSYCON is more about people who have accomplished already a lot in a skeptic world, sharing their accomplishments with each other. And there are, of course, the new people coming into the skeptics world and into the skeptics movement interested in what's going, in what's going on. But it's kind of more for like the skeptical professionals in a way. QED, on the other hand, is trying to be more like an activist group or it's trying to inspire new young people to be interested in a skeptic movement. So it kind of aims for a little bit different audience than PSYCON does. But of course, both of these conferences uh, invite great speakers and it's uh, both of these conferences are absolutely, absolutely amazing. I'm very happy I had the opportunity to go to both. Right. Now at PSYCON, we have one lecture going on at one time. Now, QED, that's entirely different, right? Yeah, QED is completely packed with all kinds of things going on at the same time. It kind of starts off the day before the official conference starts with a kind of skipty camp, which is just a bunch of smaller 10-minute talks in a row from all kinds of people from all over Europe. Uh, then the conference itself you can either choose to go to see uh, to see or hear a lecture or you can go to a workshop or you can go to a discussion panel or to a movie viewing or to a, a skeptic uh, some skeptic podcast uh, recording so there are many different things to do and it's very hard to choose what to do at, at any time that must be insane i don't know how anybody could possibly choose what is the logic behind putting on so much at once i think it that everyone kind of has an opportunity to go see what they're interested in because uh, you never have something of the same topic going on at the same time. You have many different topics going on. You can choose if you're more interested in, I don't know, if there was an interesting d uh, dentist uh, skeptic point of view or the skeptic dentistry, which I've never heard about before, or there was, you know, paranormal investigation and ghost hunting or evolutionary biology from a skeptical point of view so many different things so you kind of get to choose what's either something totally different that you don't usually read about or you can choose something you're more comfortable with and know intimately are they recording everything yeah. and releasing it i think so uh, they were recording the sessions um this lecture so i know that uh, for example captain disillusion already published his uh his session at qed so i'm guessing the others are to follow i, I, I think he's fabulous he is. He is really. He is, his talk was great. What else can you say about PSYCON? Tell me what your impressions were. Well, PSYCON, the speakers at PSYCON had about 25 minutes, which allowed uh, there to be many different topics to be presented within this short time period. So it was a great overview of seeing kind of everything that's going on or where skepticism can reach. It was uh, interesting to see all of the world work people have put into the skeptic movement and to the skeptic community. For me, the biggest shock or surprise was the problem with teaching evolution in U.S. schools. I was aware that there was a problem with the religious point of view, but I never realized there was also a problem with that the teachers simply don't understand evolution to begin with, or the the ones in the bad statistics, <laughs> and uh, so they had to 
go and kind of re-educate themselves to be able to teach uh, evolution correctly to the kids. Interesting. So that's not a problem in the Czech Republic, right? Um, no, we're, we're not a religious country, so we don't have the issues with evolution not being taught because of religion. Do you guys have your own set of problems over there that are... Well, I think um, the kind of the pseudo-medicine problems or the pseudo-scientific problems are the same everywhere. The movements now, because of social media, uh, have a huge advantage that they can connect their believers all over the world. And I think that's a huge disadvantage we skeptics have because we are a little bit decentralized. There's the American skeptics and there's the European skeptics and kind of the UK skeptics connect us. But I personally don't think that that's enough and we have to do a better job in communicating. Oh, totally agree. We need to be communicating better with each other about what's happening in our in our world. Back to your question about what kind of surprised me the most about the CSI conference or when it comes to lectures was the lecture about functional medicine because I've never heard about that before and that's something that's actually not yet in the, in Europe. There are some people doing functional medicine in the Great Britain but there, for example, in France there are absolutely none. There are three in Germany. That's pretty much it. <laughs> So this is this is like one topic we can actually work on and start to working against in time before it becomes a huge thing um, in in Western and Central Europe. Mm -hmm. And I sure would like to see find editors who are going to be able to translate these pages that are already well written in English into these other languages so that they will be able to find uh, the information they need in their own language. So. Let's just change subject again. You're going to be you're going to be running a conference here soon. September, is that right? Yes, September 2017. There's going to be the big European Skeptics Congress. It happens every two years. The last one was in 2015 in London, and the next one will be in Poland in Wrocław. Uh, unfortunately, the Polish skeptics uh, do not have many members. They do have followers, but they, don't, they do not have many members. So they asked us to help out with the Congress, since the Czech skeptics have uh, 650 members, and we are very happy to help. Uh, the city of Wroclaw is actually not that far from the Czech border, uh, which makes it very easily uh, easy to, for us to get there. They have an international airport, uh, but for those who still are not sure about going there we came up with an uh, idea that they can come to prague first because there are many many flights coming into prague and we will our club our Czech skeptics club will rent buses and we'll take the skeptics over to poland and then back after the congress oh, so i think that's wow. going to be a lot of fun oh that would be road trip that would be a blast yeah exactly <laughs> well i hope i'm going to be able to get there this this i i really am looking forward to being able to go and see what the Europeans are doing, would would somebody who speaks only English feel comfortable? Definitely, because um, Europe has many, many countries, and most of the countries have their own language. So English is also the unifying language for us as well. It's the most spoken foreign language with um, around Europe. So, for example, the conference is being uh, is under the auspices of the European Council of Skeptic Organizations, which is currently headed by uh, Gabor Hrasko, who is a Hungarian. But unfortunately, no one <laughs> outside of Hungary speaks Hungarian or not that many people. The same thing with the Czech Republic. No, not many people outside of the Czech Republic speak Czech. So there are many little languages, so we all stick to English. So the whole Congress will be in English. Um, the only part which be, will be in a foreign language are, will be the workshops that will be free for the public. They will be in Polish and they will be in that city. Tomasz Witkowski, the critical psychologist and uh, the chairman of the Polish skeptics, he came out, up with this great idea that we as skeptics, it's, and I saw that in the States, that there's a similar problem, we do not do enough outreach to the public. We like to compliment ourselves on our work and we like to agree with one another and that's great. But we also need to kind of send out the message. And so Tomasz came up with, came up with the idea that we should have workshops for free in, the, in uh, the city of the Congress. And I think that's absolutely wonderful. And th these workshops are going to be more on critical thinking, not exactly on skepticism, because the word kind of skeptic doesn't have such a good connotation in many European languages. So we're gonna stick with critical thinking. <laughs> And because that leads to skepticism anyway, and it will be an, a kind of an easier pill to swallow. How many people do you expect 
Is it too early to tell? Well, I think we can, we can come uh, with about at least 500 people. That's about what we had at SciCon, so that's a pretty intimate yeah. group still. Yeah. For example, QED had a 600-something this year. Um, it was their biggest co conference yet. I think even though we're going to be in Poland, and which uh, might seem a little bit out of the way for some people, I th a lot of people are very, very excited about coming to this Congress. So I think 500 is not a, a crazy next estimate to make. We're thinking for the people who will come to Prague that we might do some little event in Prague before we go on the Skati buses to Poland, but that's it to be determined. And do we have the days? It's September 22nd to 24th. And what's going to be um, a little bit different is that we're going to show a new movie from a Polish director who decided to document the rise of exorcisms in Poland and their popularity. So he went to film in Sunday schools and such, and his, his movie is quite disturbing and quite fascinating at the same time. So I think that'll be interesting for everyone to see how this is actually really becoming a problem, not only in Poland, but also in Italy and other um, religious states in Europe. Wow. I'm already there. I've, I'm already feel like I should be there. <laughs> Do um, So let's, let's stop for just a second and talk about one of the things I wanted to talk about. To me personally, I go to the conferences for the people. The speakers, yeah, that's great. But I want to meet the speakers in the hallway. I want to talk to them. I want to fo photograph with them. I want to socialize with them more than the lecture. You know, they say people go to the conferences for the speakers, but they return for the people. What would you think? What's the importance of attending conferences? Why should we Why should we go? Why, why shouldn't we just sit at home and watch the videos? I completely agree with you. <laughs> Honestly, I think the lectures are almost uh, redundant. <laughs> no, I mean they're okay. I mean no, no, they're a great introduction to the topic. But as you said, it's really about meeting the speakers in person because you can see the speakers speak at any on any YouTube video or read their book. But it's about having the opportunity to actually talk to them or meet them in person. And that's also what we're focusing on the European, in the European Congress is that we're going to have shorter lectures and then a lot of debate panels and discussion panels so people can go and ask questions. And there will be also breaks so people, people can discuss and meet whoever they want to meet at the conference. I'm very happy to say that Randy gave us a preliminary confirmation of coming. Oh, really? Oh, that's uh, he, great. He was very excited at, um, at, um, at the SciCon. So I hope um, he'll be able to come, as well as Massimo Polidoro, oh, who yeah. also gave us a preliminary confirmation. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a full confirmation from Sanal Ademaruku, the Indian rationalist. I think that um, you and I are both going to be advocating that people need to find a way of getting to a conference of some sort. A multi-day skeptic conference obviously would be the goal, but if people can't attend something like this for financial reasons or time issues, work, you know, relationship issues, at least try to get to your local meetups, try to, you know, meet with people offline, talk to them, share a beer, share, share a coffee. Yeah. Um, and what we're trying to do with the European Congress is the chairman of the Czech skeptics, Leo Kisha, he teaches at a media department at one of the Czech universities and the students there will come to our Congress and we'll film everything and everything will be streamed live. So people who were not able to come to the Congress will have a chance to see it live or either then later. Uh, but of course, to meet people, yes, um, there are many skeptics groups all over the states almost in every main, main city, as I had the opportunity to meet a lot of great skeptics from the States. And it's the same in Europe, even when you're traveling. Uh, I was uh, looking into one of my, uh, for one of my members because she was traveling to Thailand and they even have a skeptics in, in the pub meeting in Thailand. So pretty oh. much, uh, if you Google, you will find. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you should be able to find something. And if we're a small community, we need to be, we need to know each other. That's a great thing about skeptics, that skeptics, most of us, are very, very curious people. And I, that's a huge advantage when it comes to traveling and meeting other skeptics. Mm -hmm. Now, the last thing I want to talk to you about was one of the differences. You can hear my voice is still raspy from 
DOD. <laughs> I've only been, I got home last night. So, I mean, a full week in Las Vegas in those air conditioned buildings and yeah. all the fun and no sleep. And oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I am absolutely, my voice is actually at its best right now. It's been for days. But one of the things that's different from Cyclone compared to everybody else is it's, it typically happens at Halloween and we get to dress up. So what do you think of all these people? I saw the most creative costumes. And of course, I my son dressed up every day. Was that like a surprise that you didn't think people would be <laughs> dressing up? I, yeah, it was, surpri- it was a surprise for me to see everyone uh, that they were so enthusiastic about their costumes because someone really brought out, like your, for example, your son or even yourself, you brought out so many really well thought through costumes. Yeah, I love the zombie Trump guy. He was great. I mean, he stayed in character almost the whole time. He was really, really good. We had a lot of fun. And, you know, when you're with your people, you're in an area where you already know you're all like-minded people. It's okay to make, you know, be silly and have a great time and just yeah. joke around. It was it was like being with good friends, even if you hadn't known them long. It, a unique experience to be able to go and, and laugh and <laughs> I mean, see Richard Dawkins dressed up in Halloween costume. That was, wow, Dawkins. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go, dude. Yeah, that was that was really an experience. He was chasing people. He was dressed up as a butterfly catcher, right? Butterfly catcher, and a couple of women, Elizabeth Loftus, and who was the other woman? I don't know, but she's saying, phys- uh, let's get physical, but with words, let's get skeptical. Yeah, and, she, and he was chasing around with a butterfly net. That was yes, yes. hilarious. You know, I really was honored to have met you both. I'm so glad you came all the way from the Czech Republic. I hope more people come and travel from other, other areas. And, you know, if somebody can come all the way from the Czech Republic, you should be able to come up, you know, an hour or so. <laughs> come on now take that step to come out from behind the computer out from listening on their headphones on a podcast and let's get let's get them going well claire it's been so great talking to you i um will hopefully see you soon i'll definitely see you online and i have great memories and great photos yes yes definitely yeah it was so great to meet you i'm really happy leon also told me so much about you so i was really happy to have the opportunity to meet you in person (laughs) okay well thanks for talking to me today thank you 